this is Zach with WorkingJoe'sRoundtable.com and today we're looking at the Testo 550. For the last several years, tons of HVAC and HVACR technicians have used the Testo 550 to get the job done on a day-to-day -day basis. I myself even used the Testo 550 and the 570 for a few years to do my service job and I do residential HVAC service. Although it's good for refrigeration and commercial stuff as well. I know a lot of guys who use this tool and swear by it. And for a good reason. It's been a trusted tool for a long time. Today we're going to kind of run through how the Testo 550 works. The newer Testo 550s, 549s, they have Bluetooth. So you can link up to your phone. I have my Samsung Galaxy S6 here. And we're going to test the Bluetooth connection and how well it stays connected and for what distance. We'll see how much the Testo weighs. And we'll see its dimensions so we can compare it to other gauges. I know the S-Man 460 that I have in the truck is a little bit larger than this one. Wireless scale is all set up. Zero pounds, zero ounces. We'll put the Testo on there, 550. And we'll see that it weighs a hearty two pounds, two ounces. Just a shade under two ounces. So very lightweight. Now let's take the S-Man 460 and put it on there so we can compare. Man 460 here. And I took the clamps off so we have a nice apples to apples measurement because we don't have clamps on that one as well. So we're going to set this on here. And we are about four pounds. So a little bit shy of double the weight. So the S-Man presents a sizable difference in weight and it looks like a sizable difference in measurement. And I'll go ahead and throw on my trusty, what I call the Z-Connect. We'll see how much they weigh. Z-Connect is a Robin Air digital head matched up with a yellow jacket coupler, as you can see right there. And they are one pound, one ounce. So they're the lightest, but it, it all depends on what kind of functionality you want it to have. These don't have hoses. If you prefer a manifold, then you're going to have something that's either a couple pounds or four pounds. Our hose connections at the bottom, we are just about eight inches, more like seven and a half, high on the Testo 550. Side to side, we are just about four inches even. It's a pretty uniform rectangle with a few curves on it. So we look like we're just about four inches exactly. So a relatively compact gauge. S-Man 460. And we're measuring just about nine inches long, a little bit shy of nine inches. Let's see how far we are side to side. Counting the ears on the S-Man, we are almost nine and a half inches. Now, if we discount the ears, we go down to about seven inches. But taking into account the knobs protrude a little bit farther, so we're likely right around seven inches, maybe a little bit above for the entire gauge. All right, let's power the 550 on. This button here in the bottom right turns the 550 on. Looks like we get some sort of software indication on there. I have set up for R22 there. PSI reading, you can change those by hitting set. Changes from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Hit it again, we got PSI. Hit it again, we have PSIG. So you can change all three of those measurements. There's our vacuum. You can have an auto off or on, where it'll stay on or turn off after a certain period of time. Right below the set button, we have a min, max, and mean. That's exactly what you think it is. You can show your minimum readings, maximum, and then your mean average for a certain period of time. Also, we have the escape button. It'll take you out of wherever you were at. Let's say we change our modes. We have just our basic mode for getting superheat, subcooling, and refrigeration pressures. We hit that, and now we're in our nitrogen test mode. This is my favorite thing about these gauges. No one else seems to grasp this whole idea of the nitrogen test mode, which I think is great. What it is is you have your pipe clamps on your refrigerant piping. You charge your system up with nitrogen to test it for leaks, and it will compensate for the temperature change on the pipe with your leak test. So you'll hit your your start button there, you see the play button, it'll start counting off the minutes and showing how your pressure changed over a period of time. So you can leave and come back maybe 30 minutes later and check and see if you have a drop in pressure. 
Typically, if there's fluctuations due to temperature, the testo will compensate for it, so you're, you're not tricked into thinking that you're losing pressure on your piping. Hit stop and it'll be over. Change the mode back and you have your regular mode. The bottom right corner, you also have a light. You can turn the light on. I found that the light on the testo is very nice. Some of the other lights on different gauges are either not powerful enough or the colors are kind of, I won't say they're offensive, but they're more difficult to read. This one's very clear. I like the white backlighting. It works very well. If you're choosing refrigerants, you can hit the button in the middle. You see R22 is flashing up there. R227, it goes all the way through the gamut. Let's see if we have some of our favorites on it. There's R32, one we've talked about before. Let's see if we have... I'm sure we'll have 404A. There it is. Let's see 407C. There's 407C. Let's see 407F is on there. Let's see if we have 421A. A lot of guys use that. We just passed 410A. So let's see if we have 421A. We do. All the 422 series I'm sure we'll still have. 422A, B, C, and D. So it has all of those. Let's see if we have 424A, 427A. Let's see if we have 438A, which is MO99, and we have those as well. So have everything we need. You go through all these different refrigerants. It even has some you'll probably never use. But it's better to have more than you need. There's our isobutanes right there. Excellent. And we have water. R11 and back to the beginning. R12. Alright, once we have that, hit escape. Back to R22. We didn't make any selections. If we hit it, we change it. Let's see the R227. It's set. It sticks. Alright, we're not connected right now. I've opened up the app. It's showing some data, but it's not from this particular session. First thing we're going to do is turn the Bluetooth on. We're going to hit these up and down buttons. The Bluetooth is now on. So we'll see if we connect up automatically. Because I have paired these together already. Go ahead and hit find device. See if we have a device to connect. We have the Testo 550. Click on that. And we are now connected. So let's see how it changes. We're going to hit mode. And the phone automatically switches over so you can keep track of your nitrogen test. So it's really cool. You can get a little bit of distance. Let's see how much distance we can get from this particular device before we break our Bluetooth connection. So we're going to walk. We're connected right now. I'm going to walk the other way so it won't be in the sun as bad. Oh, we let off right there. So, Testo's in the back of the truck. We're not connected right here. Let me get the uh, measuring device. We'll see how far we got. Tape measure strung out from where I was. Now we're here at the edge of the truck bed. We're sitting right about 20 feet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch this down. See how much farther we're going to go. So we're eight foot truck bed right there. So 28 feet is about what we got on that test. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this inside of one of these panels to sort of simulate it being inside one of the units, see how it does then. We have our devices connected, as you can see here. I'm going to set the Testo 550 inside of this compartment, right next to the old Stay Bright Edge. We are connected right now. Let's go ahead and take a walk down there and see how we do. So we are connected. Not connected now. And there's our mark from before. So I'm sitting about five foot closer, at least, maybe six. So we're looking at between 20 and 23, 24 feet on the range with the inside of the truck toolbox. What do I think of the Testo manifold? First and foremost, it's small. And I like that, because as a service technician, it has to be compact for me to use it. Lightweight. If you're using something that's not part of a huge analyzer kit, like you have your job link stuff, 
from Field Piece. You have the iConnect and iManifold from Imperial or North Park Innovations. If you have your Testo Smart Probes, you can use it as part of a larger set of tools used to analyze the system. But if you prefer a gauge set by itself, standalone, then to me, this is the number one. It's relatively inexpensive, between two and three hundred dollars for this gauge set. You get the two clamps on the outside, the same ones Testo's used for years. Very easy to use, very compact, very lightweight. The Bluetooth range, I would say to classify between the range of this Bluetooth and other like manifolds, like taking field piece and the iConnect into consideration, the Bluetooth range is short. It's going to be the shortest of that group. Now, knowing that, I would not use this tool to communicate as I was working in an attic with a unit that's running outside. That would be too far in almost every occasion. Maybe you could use it on manufactured homes where the units are very close to the condensers. Other than that, you probably lose connection. What you could use this for is working on rooftop units and other package units where you have to set the manifold inside of the unit to communicate to the outside. Truthfully, I think the Bluetooth is a secondary feature. It's not really why you should buy or use the Testo 550. I think the reason why you should use the Testo 550 is because it is just its very trustworthy. It's very durable. And it's one of the things where you can get it and you'll have it around for a long time and you know refer to it as old trusty after a certain period of time. You can use the application to email reports to people. You can set up trending. So if you are close enough to establish the Bluetooth link, you can trend different measurements, which is very nice. Keeping in mind that you have to be close enough for that, and that's going to be within 35 foot or so. That's the maximum we got. That's open air. If we created a bunch of structural obstacles, it's probably going to cut it down to at least half of that. For comparison, you have the field piece that's somewhere around 200 feet with some of their signals, and then you have the eye connect, which is, you know, it could be up to 1,000 feet. Now, the thing is, you don't need 1,000 feet on most jobs. In fact, as a residential technician, I don't need 1,000 feet ever. But I do have some jobs where the field piece was too far apart to link up. I had one like that yesterday. Giant house, a big old house, uh, probably four or 5,000 square foot. It was just so big that it wouldn't link up. Now, the iConnect would have been able to link up there, but the field piece couldn't. You just have to know the limitations of your tools and what you intend for them to do. If you're looking for an everyday gauge set, this is it right here. But if you need something more, then you have to get something else. That's my feelings on the subject. I have owned a Testo 550 before. Um, I was very fortunate. I gave it to a young tech who was coming up because at that point I was starting to test the iConnect and I'm testing field piece now. Uh, but I have no qualms against going back and using this every single day. It gives you all the information you need. You have, for example, I'm turning it on here for a second. You have, of course, your pressure readings and your temperature readings. And your temperature saturation readings will tell you a lot about what you need to know about a system. Of course, you have your pressure, but if you have your saturation for your condenser and evaporator, you can then use simple equations, and I go over those equations on workingjoesroundtable.com. We're on WJR Pro. We go over how to use your saturation temperatures to see if your unit is performing based on its sear level and the temperatures inside of the return dry bulb. So it's fairly easy to use a simple gauge set, which doesn't put you back more than $300, that has some Bluetooth capabilities. You're a couple equations away from doing most of the stuff that you need on the job site, even for the analyzers. All that you're missing is a couple indoor air measurements. You can do those separately in a static measurement, or you can get some sort of communicating tool that'll send that information outside. Keep it in mind, you can use products like the Field Piece to team up with this product. If you don't want to use the S-Man, you can use this product and use the SDP2. You don't necessarily have to have all the products. Now with the iConnect, you're going to have to use their products because it all goes back to the iConnect hub and then back to the phone. But on the Field Piece, you can use a JL2, little job site deal, and you put it on your side. You can get the SDP2 and just use those and use your Testo if you think this is the more rugged than the S-Man. And it is a little bit smaller than the S-Man and it's a little bit lighter than the S-Man. The disadvantage is you're not going to have that complete reporting that you would have had with the job link setup. So taking that in consideration, I would endorse the Testo 550. I mean, obviously, I've owned a Testo 550 and the 570. I was very happy with them, had no issues with them. 
and I think, uh, actually, I think the hook fell off of mine. But back in the day with the 550, the hooks fell off of everybody's, and that's a problem that doesn't occur any longer. In fact, I think at one point Rob Dippold was giving away Testo hooks. But if that's the biggest problem you got, that ain't too bad, guys. So that's how I feel about the Testo 550. Tell me what you think in the comments.